Welcome back to AM Live. Now, rare disorders, a name given to a group of diseases, they hit only the very few. For example, Prada Valley Syndrome, which causes poor muscle tone, is uh, thought to occur in only 1 in 30,000 people worldwide. But while there are between 6 and 8,000 rare diseases, half of which affect children, very little is actually known about them. So what exactly are rare disorders? Patricia Ng, from uh, president of Singapore's Rare Disorder Society, and Carmen Chia, a mother whose son Isaac was diagnosed with a rare disorder, explained it to us. When we say rare, it's not just about uh, the information not being readily available, mm -hmm. uh, but also the, the, um, the low chances of occurrence. So mm -hmm. like in the US, uh, maybe they define uh, a disease to be rare when it uh, is prevalent in, uh, say, 200,000 Correct. people okay. and then probably in Europe and other countries they okay. have a different so, number. So the standard to which they subject rare disorders would be rather different country to country but yes. uh, th these disorders, are they usually difficult in diagnosing them? In a way, like especially in Singapore where the occurrence is slow, so the uh, healthcare professionals here, they have little knowledge of them. Mm -hmm. So even when the uh, symptoms present themselves at early stages, we may not be able to pick them up right away mm -hmm. and because uh, various diseases they share uh, common symptoms mm -hmm. so we may not be able to decipher what they are right yeah. well Carmen perhaps you can share with us uh, your son Isaac is 19 months old and he was diagnosed with a rare disorder Cornelia de Lange syndrome when he was just uh, two weeks old How, when did you first discover that something was amiss when, uh, when he is born, he uh, couldn't feed, feeding. Mm -hmm. uh, he can't suck milk, then he dehydrate and admit to hospital when he is one week old. Mm -hmm. So a few times admit to hospital, finally we refer to KK, mm -hmm. where right. I know that he's got a, a, this syndrome. Mm -hmm. oh, how, how did you feel when you first learned about it? I mean, here you go, here you go, hopefully this all make you happy. There you go. <laughs> When you first heard the news, I mean, um, it was after a few times you were admitted to hospital, right? Mm -hmm. In and out. How, how did you feel about this um, um, first news when you heard about Cornelia de Lange uh, syndrome? Did you know about it? I don't know this syndrome at all. And like, and doctors suspect, she says suspect, and I, I don't want to accept this, this fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> To come uh, to yeah, terms, right? I deny this and I don't want to learn all about this kind of thing. I feel that he is normal. I still hope that he is a normal. Mm -hmm. Then after uh, refer to KK, then um, yeah, I, I start, I, I, I need to learn all this right. kind of thing. Yeah. And was it easy during the whole journey of learning and discovering what this... Not easy, but not, actually it's not so difficult, but it's just that I'm kind of like refill and I'm... Yeah. Right, ah. Because okay. you're all alone, you don't know what to do, right? Yeah. Well, Patricia, maybe you can share with us. Tell us a bit more about the, the syndrome that Isaac suffers from, this uh, Canina de Lange syndrome. Can you briefly tell us what that is? Uh, is? Um, okay, basically, from what you can see, uh, it actually affects the physical uh, development as well as the intellectuals. So, uh, for what we can see, it's something that's visible. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, they have poor weight gain and then. Uh, you have long curly lashes, uh, uh, lips that are, right. are downturned, right. and then uh, intellectually uh, they are also affected and it ranges from mild to profound. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, this syndrome is just one of the many that we classify under rare disorders. I guess what we want to highlight is the sort of um, challenges that you face day to day uh, because it's so rare, there's not enough support out there, right? Um, and you're hoping that perhaps uh, there'll be a higher level of awareness and more people can understand and help out. I mean, what, who was your support network? Uh, How crucial were they? Uh, from a special tube feed network and kennel and all the friends that, that try to, yeah, nurse, care nurse, home care nurse, that try to teach me how to feed him, you know, how to like, like, suction, to for all the friend suction. Okay. Yeah, oh, Patricia, is there a support group for, for parents who may be in a similar situation? Where should they seek help? Because I think what Carmen is facing is, you know, is not entirely new for those in a similar circumstance, but at the same time, it catches us all by surprise that we don't know where to turn. Mm. Um, okay. 
like uh, we have a society being set up, the Rare Disorder Society Singapore. Uh, basically, my husband, myself, uh, and some parents with children uh, suffering from rare disorders, uh, we are part of the society. Mm -hmm. So um, we do link up parents, uh, and then uh, they share ex their experience in caring for the child. Uh, we also link them up with uh, healthcare professionals, social workers, um, mm -hmm. to help them with whatever uh, information or needs that they may have. What, what's the greatest challenge? Um, what are the special needs and, and uh, situations usually like these that you have to take into account? Um, for patients, uh, because we have different types of diseases, right. some with treatment, some without. So some of them, uh, there's no treatment, but they need a special diet. Uh, and these special diets are very expensive mm -hmm. and for those who uh, where the diseases have treatment the treatment itself mm -hmm. is very expensive which mm -hmm. can come up to like a few hundred thousand a year mm -hmm. and continues to increase as they grow older and heavier mm -hmm. and then a lot of them need like frequent suction to help them breathe better right, right. Uh, their movements are restricted because of the physical uh, disabilities mm -hmm. so even the activities of uh, daily living they need a lot of help yeah. and care in terms of that I, I mean Carmen you were just telling us a bit earlier that uh, Isaac will be starting school next school week soon, but yeah. you had a bit of trouble finding a school that was suitable or that I yeah. guess that could take him right I mean what were some of the challenges first of all is long waiting list for the special right. school and then for small baby like this he can only like go to school for two days a week mm -hmm. so can you, like those child care like put him mm -hmm. five days a week a few hours a bit difficult to find this kind of child care for isaac for mm -hmm. special need so this is a difficult for me is there uh, does that more, no, more need to be done in that sense uh, of course uh, because there's very little awareness amongst the public uh, mm. financially and non-financially we are not getting um, much help and attention um, because they form a minority group in the society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the moment, we hope to create more awareness through various activities uh, because we believe with more awareness, knowledge uh, comes more acceptance. And with acceptance, will, there will be more assistance for people mm -hmm. like okay. Isaac. Okay. That was Patricia Ang, the president of Singapore's Rare Disorder Society and Carmen Chia, mother of 19-month-old Isaac, who suffers from the rare disorder Cornelia de Lange syndrome. And if you'd like to learn more about rare disorders, you can visit the Society's website at the following address. Coming up later on AM...